Tom, and uh, I work in Alibaba as a system architect. Today, I will show what we are doing in Alibaba about uh, the private infrastructure cloud. This is today's agenda. First, I will introduce the background and the middle stones about this project. Then I will show our architecture, which is based on OpenStack. After that, I will talk about the customization. That means how we build our infrastructure cloud based on OpenStack. First, I want to contrast the traditional operation between private cloud. Traditional operation is more manual. Engineers may write scripts or tools to help the automation of operations. So there would be many loose subsystems or tools, such as DNS tools or load balance tools, etc. And it is engineer who decided how to use these resources, such as using which, which IP running virtual machine on which physical server. This may take a lot of time and may make mistakes. The private cloud is different. It is also automated, but it is more intelligent. The cloud maintains a unified resource pool and decides how to use resources. Our private infrastructure cloud focus, focuses on two sides. One is compute and one is network. Uh, why we do this is all caused by problems. These are the problems we have met. During the past months, the physical servers and the network devices grows rapidly. We are now maintaining a large scale of hardware. There are all basic resources we should use. We should make a better use of our them. They would be out of control if it is still controlled manually. And we have also met the large scale page view. Our like a November 11th sale, Alibaba holds a promotion sale in November 11th every year on Taobao and Tmall. Our system and the network would be impacted uh, because of the PICA page view hour. We do need an infra infrastructure which can provide an elastic service so that we can extend the computer ability and finish network demands in minutes. This is our, our milestones. We started to design and implement from quarter one of, of 2011. In quarter two of 2011, we released the first version and published it to use, which is scaled to more than 1,000 virtual machines. In quarter four of 2011, we added the in, in interaction with the load balances to the system, so the system can extend quickly. In 2012, three branches appeared in this project. One branch is aimed to make use of the Hadoop resources, which we call it uh, offline resources. These resources are used in Net, and their peak hour is in Net too. But at the daytime, they are free. On the other hand, our online services are running in daytime. We wanted to use the offline resources to run online services, so we can avoid the impact hours and make use of these offline resources. This branch succeeded in November 11, 2012. We succeeded to start the peak hour between online services and the offline computes. Another branch was to build an infrastructure as a service platform, which can manage a large scale of metro machines. Till 2012, our platform has maintained more than 10,000 scale of virtual machines. The third branch is for network. This, this branch started for from this year, 2013, we want to build a platform to provide network as a service, and I will introduce at last. 
This is our architecture, which includes computer and network, just like OpenStack. The computer in the picture provides a virtual machine as a service. The network subsystem provides network connectivity as a service. Computer gets network connectivity from network subsystem, and the identity subsystem provides a unified authentication. All others connect to it and get, it, get its authority. Engineers use dashboards to operate. This is a flow chart to show the user guide. Cloud API is the main interface for the dash dashboards. Engineers use dashboards to control the system. And when a request comes in, the Cloud API accepts the request, gets the authority, and puts it, puts it, puts it into the message queue. First, the scheduler gets the request and decides how to schedule this, this request. The core resource allocation algorithm is implemented in this component. When the schedule has done its job, it puts the request into the messenger again. The manager component gets the request from messenger queue and reads the allocation information from the database. It gets the execute driver and run the execute sequences. First, it generates the block disk and allocates local disk via LM. Then it configures the network to, the, to get the connect, connectivity. At last, it configures the hypervisor and launches the virtual machine. Our order design didn't separate the network from, the, from this, term, this, this system. From this year, we started to study a new branch to do this. The network subsystem was run as an independent component and provided an interface for the other systems. Before is the general architecture for our total system. Next, I will introduce the system design in more detail. First is our computer subsystem. It provides the virtual machine as a service, just like Nova or OpenStack. It is the core subsystem and solve the problems for the operating system and administrator. We have large scale deployed it and it is 10,000 scale now. This is the architecture for our computer subsystem. It is based on OpenStack, and we have done a lot to make it suit our environment. You can see the cloud controller is the core component. It provides the result, the rest for API to the dashboards and to the platform as a service and uh, also to other systems. Virtual machine management, uh, image management, uh, and the scheduler are also implemented in cloud controller. Another important thing is the resource pool. The resource pool maintains all the resource information. All models depend on this pool. Zone controller runs in each zone. The zone is a logical conception, and each IDC can have one zone controller or several, con uh, or several zone controller. Each physical server runs as an agent called a node controller to master the resources and the executions in large physical server. Next, I will introduce the problems we have met and how we do the customization of OpenStack. The first important problem is the computer driver of OpenStack. The Nova computer driver allows all computer nodes to access the same database. This may cause problems. What would happen when there were thousands of computer nodes? The single database would suffer a lot, and we should do a lot of optimization for the database. Let's see what we do to resolve the problem. Let's see this picture. We separated the original computer, computer driver of Nova into two parts. 
One is called zone controller, and another is called node controller. The zone controller can access the database, while the node controller cannot. Zone controller access the database and uh, get the detailed information and generate execution sequences. Node controller is just like an agent in each physical server. It gets commands from zone controller and executes the commands. The node controller can't access the database, and it is more simple, just to execute. OK, let's see how we do the image management. This is an important problem between the public cloud and the private cloud. Public cloud may have lots of images for end users before, because each end user may, have, may want his own image. So public cloud must spend more time to improve the storage for large scale of images. It needs a heavy system, like, uh, just like a glance of OpenStack. On the other hand, the private cloud just have several images because the operating system in the company should be more standard. A light storage system may be useful. We just use a file system. But the private cloud must spend more time to reduce the transfer time, while the efficiency is very important. Let's say what we do in this field. We did a layered catch system to promote the efficiency. We maintain the image meta information in the core database, and we deploy catches in each zone and in each physical server. In this case, if we, want, if we want to run an instance, the node can get the image from its, his own local cache. And there would be no transfer time, because there are just several images. So we can do, to do this thing. Scheduler driver is the core component of the, our system. It decides how to allocate resources. We have designed an algorithm to do this. The design of this algorithm has several limits. It should get a high resource usage, and it must also be stability and fault tolerant. All our applications run on this system. When a network device is down, it must not affect the application. That means we must so consider the distribution of the match machines for the application. Besides this, we also measure specific network demands. In Alibaba, we have lots of applications. Each application wants his own VLAN. So we need, need a dynamic VLAN to resolve this problem. And after the, after the generator of the virtual machine, we should configure network environment such as ACL, DNS, load balances, etc. Because we cannot find a convenient method to do this, we should do this, this manually. How we resolve these problems before? We use VLAN trunk to resolve a lot of VLANs. We configure the resolved VLANs in network devices beforehand. The scheduler calculates a VLAN that the application should use. When the instance launches, the driver do local, local network configuration to join it to the calculated VLAN. This method we use it is more static. And this result and this result is not we wasted a lot of IP. Some application may use several IP in its own VLAN, and the left IP would not be used anymore. We do need a dynamic and programmable network. Sorry. From 2013, 
we started to build our network platform. The platform aims to maintain network's own resources and provide a network as a, as a service platform. It also can provide a programmable API for other systems which needs a network connection. This subsystem is under construction, and we have just uh, can have, have, have just uh, uh, do the architecture. This is the concept, concept architecture of our network platform. We wanted to build it via SDN. Photosense SDN platform is our target. Not only open floor because of the issue left over by history. Most of our network devices are commercial devices, such as Cisco or Huawei. So the platform we build must include them. And the protocols it supports include SMP NetConf. We can do data connecting by SMP and operation by NetConf. The OpenFlow protocol separates network device controller into two parts. One is the controller, and one is data forwarding. We can do a lot of elastic things by writing controllers by OpenFlow. Our platform will take it as an important part. This is the technical architecture of our network platform. It is also a layered structure. Cloud controller is the core component. It provides the northbound API to the upper layer system. Zone controller is responsible for controlling the devices in its, its own zone, which can, can contains commercial devices, open floor devices, load balances, and others. At last, I will introduce why we want to build a this network platform via SDN. We think SDN can unify network resources and we can upgrade seamlessly. The important thing is that we can dynamically schedule network resources and promote the efficiency. So we can get an elastic network via SDN. It's all on the way, and we are trying our best to do this. That's all. Thank you. <laughs>